How do you think the Altgeld bells work? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, <laughs> I never really thought about that. Um, I guess the bell works by someone pushing it up and down. Like, I always thought of like um, the punchback of Notre Dame just going up there. The Altgeld bells? Um, I have no idea. Okay. I have, they're probably like on some kind of program. That's what I would think. Um. Um, I think that it's it. Um, <laughs> this is all system. I don't. Uh, I'm assuming there's a single person um, in charge of some buttons that probably make the bells ring at certain times. You just press the play button. Church? Um, I don't know. Probably computerized. Like, we're at a fancy institution, so there's probably like a computer that, like, you know, is like, oh, it's time to ring the bell. My name is Tina Horton, and I am currently the Algeld Chimes Master. Um, I'm also a teaching assistant at the University of Illinois School of Music. This is the instrument that you hear when you hear the bells ringing. We play these concerts every passing period. Uh, well, not every passing period, but we can only play during the passing period. And they usually last about 10 minutes long. Honestly, I rely on my players a lot. <laughs> and um, it's really great having a team behind you that's just like, yeah, absolutely, I'm, I'm there, you know. Uh, my name is Jared Fox. I'm Cope Cumston. My name is Daniel Marks. My name is Liam Flood. I'm Anvi, and I am a Chimes player. The keyboard is kind of funky. Every time I bring a music major up here, they're like, what is this logic? <laughs> um, and well, anyone who's played an instrument, when they look at the keyboard, they're like, what is this? Um, the reason why is the bells historically were built to play Illinois loyalty. That was the main song for them. They were also built to play campus songs like the alma mater and such. So that is why the keys are a select range. Um, and that's why it was established to help encourage campus spirit. You only have two hands and sometimes you can use your foot. But when you when you add a second person, you can play full chords that you weren't able to play by yourself. You can really add on a lot of pieces of music than is possible just by yourself. We've got a great Phantom of the Opera duet that really gives the bells a workout. Part of the joy is the challenge. It, it is a struggle because you can't just pick up a piece of music and in most cases have it right. So for instance, I was just trying to arrange a song for a friend, uh, Shania Twain's Man, I Feel Like a Woman. And I could not find an arrangement that had um, only F sharps. And I couldn't find an arrangement that um, was within our 15 note. So fortunately we do have a very large archive, 99 years worth of music that people have been putting together for this instrument. So that's, that's pretty good for us. It is frustrating at times just to know that you are limited in some ways, but we have definitely never had a shortage of material to play. Uh, the bells were played until about 1951, um, and then at that point they needed some serious repairs, so they were closed down, and then it opened back up around 1957, and that's when one of the first Chimes Masters, um, Albert Marion, began. And he started this process of bringing students in, teaching them, and Sue Wood, the second Chimes Master, was one of those students. She started in about 1971, and she became Chimes Master in about 1994. And she is the reason we have the program that we do today, the one that I am now in charge of. So um, she also taught a lot of students. She would give tours, because that's for, we had, historically we've had a 1250 time slot for, uh, it was like a tour and also a concert. Oh, Sue was such a wonderful spirit. and. People would line up at the door waiting for it to open every single day. And we had a limit of 25 people, and sometimes we had to cut it off. But the university administration has a lot of safety concerns. Getting up to the bell tower isn't the easiest thing. It is not accessible for people who have disabilities. And it is not entirely compliant with the fire code. And there's always a risk, as it's only one exit out of the chamber. 
and we're told uh, if there's a, there's a fire, hit the emergency button and go up into the tower itself and wait to be rescued. Realizing that the tower is nearing 100 years old. Our playing chamber was renovated a, a couple of years ago and the bells were retuned. And as I remember it, there was no indication that it was ever going to open back up to the players, um, let alone tours. But I think the renovations were mainly for safety. It was safety and infrastructure. It was really infuriating for the Chimes players that were there at the time. So they had to do um, a lot of work to fix the stairs we climbed up uh, um, earlier. For my mentor, at least, it was so frustrating to him that he went to news outlets, like local news outlets, and broadcasted his feelings. Um, also had to redo these playing consoles, both the practice and the actual instrument itself. I think we did some work to the bells. We added this automatic system. Well, an automation system was installed when they did some renovation on the bells. They had to replace supports and beams and things like that because it was in danger and they had to repoint the bricks inside the tower. Uh, and when they did that, Verdon, the company that does the repairs, installed a, a computerized system so that the chime, the quarter hour, can be played by computer. Um, the, the solution that the university has, has made for to play it automatically is um, basically adding pistons that push down um, the, each lever. And then, you know, it uses a blast of air to force the lever down to play notes. Um, and so, it turns out it's incredibly weak, and um, this, this is a 99-year-old instrument. You can imagine that a hard piston quickly pushing down a le lever is not great for the longevity of the instrument. The wood is cracking. It's not, it, it doesn't play it in, in correct time. You know, it's just, we just don't like it. Um, and then it, it comes preloaded with music that it can play automatically, and supposedly that's what the university was going to use to replace uh, human chimes players. But that's also not good because it assumes that we have a full two octaves of notes, which we don't. Well, I don't want to speak against the people who support the tower. I think they thought they were doing a good thing, but they don't play the bells, and they don't know what these systems do. And uh, I think they were sold, you know, a package by the Verdon Company, which wants to make money. Uh, if I have to put it bluntly, it was a complete waste of money. I, I'm a little bit worried in the future that the system might become automatic. The South Bell Tower was built to be an automatic system, and it can only be played automatically. And have you ever heard it play? Maybe once? I've heard it play once. Our system was built as a manual system where its intended use was by human users, pushing down levers. That machine cannot do what we can do, and that machine does not have the passion that we have, and that machine will never replace what we are. And if they seek to implement it fully, then they're going to lose uh, an integral part of their campus community and their campus culture. There's a special touch and passion that comes when a human is playing music and you can hear that as well in the bells. And sure we make mistakes, we all make mistakes. That's how you know a real person is doing it. Altgeld is up for renovation soon um, and that poses a big threat to the future of the Chimes because we don't really know what the deal is going to be. I don't think anyone really knows what the deal is going to be yet. The situation is complicated with the university because there are so many layers of bureaucracy that you have to go through. The last I heard is that the building is being gutted except for the, the library because it's a historical landmark. Um, this was last spring semester. They even tried to lock us from opening the hatch, which not only is that an issue for us in terms of being able to hear the bells, because if that hatch is closed, it's very difficult to actually hear inside the building. Um, but that's also our only fire escape. The, the future renovation of Altgeld could be three years, four years, seven years. It could never be done. I mean, we have no idea. I think that the players are really doing their best, especially the Chimes Master, to fight any university administration that might be trying to 
stop players from coming up to the tower and putting more restrictions than there already are. And um, whether they, whether the university decides to remember the chimes as they renovate Altgeld is, an, is a whole other question. And if we're going to be able to continue this tradition when, um, when it reopens, we don't really know. We have a lot of plans in, in the future. We, uh, we, we're a very active organization. Um, I think, uh, like, people, obviously people don't know really the ins and outs of the Bells, but we're really trying to be on the come up right now. Um, we are, we just finished recruiting some new players who are going to continue the traditions um, and bring some new diverse songs to what we're playing. Um, and we also have concerts that we're doing all the time. It was such a simple idea, and it grew into this super long tradition um, that has outlasted so many other university chime systems. Um, still ringing today, still run by people, and they still play the songs that everyone on campus wants to hear. And so I think the significance of the tradition is that it's always been what people have wanted it to be, and it's never been anything different. Um, being a chimes player has been one of the most rewarding experiences that I've had on this campus and in my life. I feel like I am able to express myself through my music. I am able to express my feelings and thoughts and I'm able to share it with thousands of students on a daily basis. It's a very special space. You know, it's a beat up old room in a, in a tall brick tower, but it's got persona. And when you're up there, you know you're somewhere special. And the, the keyboards are gorgeous. The, the polished wood and the, you know, the brass labels and the cables going up through the ceiling and, you know, the occasional pigeon dive bombing you and things like that. Uh, it's, it's just a place with a lot of power, and the bells have a lot of power. They're very beautiful, and they have been loved for 99 years. They, every student on this campus has loved the bells. I really love being a chimes player. It has been one of my favorite experiences on the campus. It is something that I will carry with me for the rest of my life, and I, uh, I don't really want to give up my key because I'd like to be able to come back and play it sometime, but I'm going to hold on to that till the day I graduate. That's it. All right. They're awesome. <laughs> Excuse me, what do you think of the Alkel Bells? Can you about Alkel Bells?